Welcome back to Veterans Onward to Prosperity. I'm Master Sergeant Retired Anna Maria Blivin, talking with Jennifer from Operation Foxhole. So, managing expectations to mitigate moments of distress is the bulwark of what it is that we need to do as military members that love and want the best for our military family. I know we love and want the best for our military family. Even when we're stressed to the max and we're doing things and saying things that under other circumstances, we would not be doing and not saying. So let's take responsibility for our actions, guys and gals, and let's do what we can, okay? So operationfoxhole.org is the website where Jennifer's information, resources, and sources come into play. But I also want to say that there is a special place on their website for prevention of domestic violence and sexual assault. Okay. We have what we need. We have the tool. We have the source. If that's not enough, you also have something of V-A-W-N-E-T. That's Victor Alpha Whiskey. November Echo Tango. It's a project of the National Resource Center on Domestic Violence. Do your diligence. Do your diligence, military warrior and veteran, to know what it is that you need to do to face what it is that you need to face so that you and your family can be whole and healthy. And I'm not just talking physical health, I'm talking whole and healthy in every which way possible. Our military families are there to love and support us. And sometimes that can be challenging if we make it so. So Jennifer, in Operation Foxhole, specifically, how it is, how is it that you support military families? Um, so on our website, we have a chat now option where in the moment, a client can reach out to us and chat in real time with an advocate. Our advocate can connect the service member spouse or the veteran spouse with either the family advocacy program on installation or the VA's um, interpersonal intimate person uh, violence program. And uh, we also can connect them with their local domestic violence shelters if they need emergency housing situations. But a big part of our program is the empowerment piece. So what we strive to do is to break the patterns of underemployment and undereducation in the military spouse community. A lot of these spouses don't have the opportunity to obtain certifications or college degrees because we're PCSing so often. And so we've teamed up with National University to provide those spouses with education opportunities that they can do from home or on campus if they happen to live out in California. They can do it uh, at a work at their own pace. Uh, so, you know, they're able to achieve those goals. And then we've also teamed up with some employment opportunities to be able to work on resume building, interview skill building, and actually find careers that will move with a lot of the, the military spouses too. So many of them currently work in fast food restaurants or retail positions which are fabulous but if they're leaving violence situation they're going to need career opportunities where they can be independent yes and mobile correct because yeah because uh like you said the pcs this permanent change of station for those of you that don't know that simply means that every three or four years, although I did hear that they were gonna extend that to six years for the reasons that you were just saying, but um, let's say it's three to four years and you're moving. So how do you convince an employer, an employer 
to employ you knowing full well that in three or four years you're going to be gone unless you get in with a with a chain of restaurants that would allow you to transfer to other locations but uh, that's not always the case so if you're able to get a job like working at home and being mobile that's all the better uh, opportunity for uh, for being a military spouse totally agree and it's really important too as a military spouse that they have have their own autonomy from the service member. I mean, so much of our lives as a spouse is to support our service member. We move with them. We, you know, we follow the same rules and regulations on base that they have to do. But we also need selves, right? We need our own identity in order to continue to build our steam and fill our bucket as well yes you yes you hit the nail right on the head absolutely and then guess what we get to do veterans and warriors we get to support them in helping helping them build their lives because they need to have a life they do they need to they need to be strong see if they're strong and we're strong well then guess what we have a strong family and mm -hmm. a stronger family can get through things to manage expectations and mitigate moments of distress. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. All right. So on the website, there is a chat box, should you need it. And I am so glad that you have that chat box, should you need it. So Thank Jennifer, you. is there anything that you want to add before we wrap this sec segment up in this episode? You know, um, I just wanted to mention that Operation Foxhole has teamed up with some really important organizations. The first organization is the National Organization for Victim Assistance, or NOVA is their acronym. And um, along with Operation Foxhole and Nova, we are providing education pieces to community domestic violence shelters and homeless shelters so that they can better assist our military families when they enter their resources. They also have a large library of resources if anybody has any questions as far as what domestic violence looks like in the military, what some of the first steps are that they can take. So that's a, a really good opportunity, and we're really proud to be able to reach um, a lot of the community resources. As you said earlier, uh, currently, they don't necessarily speak the military language. They don't understand the military culture. So our hope is, is along with NOVA, we're able to provide that education piece and bridge that gap. And that's important because in the moment of crisis, you've got to have somebody that you can reach out and rely on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, then we've teamed up with the Veteran Spouse Network out of the University of Texas in Austin. And with that organization, um, they are holding a Veteran Spouse Resiliency Group. So it's a support group for veteran spouses, um, you know, where you can dialogue about these stresses that we've been talking about and you can get the peer support um, that you need to help mitigate some of these situations. They also have a virtual social club. Uh, we were finding during the pandemic, it was you know obviously hard for people to get out and connect with one another. So they do uh, monthly book clubs, they do coffee chats, uh, different social things. So you can reconnect with other uh, veteran spouses across the U.S. And then um, they also provide a veteran transitioning support program. So a lot of times uh, just transitioning out of the military into civilian life can be stressful both for the spouse and the service member having to redefine your identity and, and your roles again. So the Veteran Spouse Network and the University of Texas assist with that. 
And then lastly, uh, we've teamed up with the Military Family Advisory Network, or MFAN. And right now, our goal is to feed military families. Uh, we started recognizing the food insecurities that a lot of our service members and veteran families experience. And so it's our mission to create food banks and uh, financial opportunities for our military families so that feeding our families uh, is not one of the stressors that we have to deal with. Oh my goodness, that is so, that's a lot more resources and sources than I actually thought I was going to hear today. <laughs> I'm, at, I'm, I'm overjoyed to know that that much support is available to us. Yeah, it's pretty exciting. We're really proud of, of everybody's efforts. That's really cool. So, um, Wow, I, I'm glad I, I asked for <laughs> for a, uh, for you to to share you know uh, some some things with with our audience as as basically parting words. But um, wow, I wow, I'm taken aback with all the lists that you just shared. So mm -hmm. I guess what I'm going to try and do is re-listen to this broadcast myself, take notes, go and see where the websites are for all of these. And then on Veterans Onward to Prosperity YouTube channel, I will list them. I will definitely list them. And I'll also list them on the Facebook group so that, uh, so that we can make use of them. It's one thing to say, hey, we have a dinner for you and you've got an appetizer, dessert, entree and dessert, and all you do is you eat your entree, but you've missed your appetizer and dessert. Jennifer just gave you the appetizer and dessert. So let's make sure that we make a full availability that is our accessibility to what is available to us. Let's do it guys, let's do it. And let's have strong, healthy families in the process. Jennifer, thank you so much for being on this show and for bringing us all that wonderful uh, resources and sources and information. Um, and thank you too. On behalf of Veterans Onward to Prosperity TV show and all the veterans and warriors that listen to us, we heartfully thank Operation Foxhole for being in existence and doing what it is you do. Thank you, Anna Maria. We are so glad that you gave us the platform to reach more families. Um, and thank you for everything that you do to try to educate the military community. Ah, oh, it's our pleasure. We can just have more strong families and healthy families. Then this episode is a win and mission possible for families. Well, with that, I will wrap up this episode after these messages.